so we are on week uh, 10 I believe let me just double check we are on week 10 so week 10 is gonna be here and uh, multi-threading and thread classes is what we went through um, the next thing that has come is preprocessor directives and there is pointers and um, these are all uh, things that uh, kind of non-related to OOP to is into uh, C++ but uh, except for multiple inheritance um, uh, that is actually an important thing to, s to go through but um, uh, well um, and linked list technology I've already demonstrated for you so you know exactly what they are you have the samples written for you in um, algorithms um, we create the linked list and a queue uh, a stack so you know exactly what they are so th 13 is already covered um, bitwise operators we'll talk about preprocessor directives and things like that um, and all the quizzes will be up so you're gonna go through it sorry I was in bed for like a few days and couldn't sit on a chair so uh, I, I just have made available one quiz and then went through it I'm gonna make those things available it's gonna be practice for you it's a good thing to go through them uh, I will uh, again have an announcement and uh, as usual um, um, uh, kind of a uh, preparation thing is something that you have to acknowledge um, for for the final test that is going to be uh, on week 13th make sure that you understand that it's 10 right now so in three weeks we're going to have our final test I'm going to um, the process is going to be exactly the same you're going to be doing it in class as we have done it before um, and the details of everything on the test is going to be up there um, although it's week 10 right now and we're supposed to have a lab so I'm not at school right now so it's I think it's a good idea if we um, talk about preprocessor directives to kind of fall ahead a little bit on what we need to um, the topics that we need to talk about um, before I continue I want to know if there is any question that I can answer down to this point I know you just briefly talked about the exams, uh, but I just wanted to make sure, is the exam just covering only between week 8 to week 13, or is it covering the entirety, both some, both parts? Okay, first of all, uh, we don't call it exam, it's final test. Okay. Exam, if you fail it, you fail. This one, if you fail it, you don't fail, okay? Okay. All right, so it's final test. It's the weighted average of the two tests that indicates if if it's one of the conditions of passing the thing so that's number one uh, okay. number two um, uh, in any semester students ask that and the question is that how can I tell you it's from 8 to 8 to 12 like I would tell you okay because that's the case there's not going to be any standard library used in it you're not going to use any functions no error handling no expressions <laughs> I can't do that right so so it's the these if the it, it will be focused on these let's put it this way but if i if i'm using an algorithm and i'm asking you to pass a functor to it you're not going to tell me hey functor is for the first thing of a semester and you can't do it you know what i mean so yeah i don't know what you mean i, mean, yeah, so I, I yeah, just want to know you're what, absolutely what? right focus is going to be actually for us focus is going to be on week uh because we didn't do error handling so you're going to have some um exception handling and stuff over there uh, some standard library so it's going to be uh, um, week 5 to uh, 13. Uh, Are you going to put up the missing files you had for the error handling because that's the only one that you don't have in like the notes? Uh, we don't have the error handling in the notes? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, like, I've checked through the notes multiple times, unless I missed something. Maybe, I I so I'm going to go through it one more time today. Can you pay, uh, wow, I, I want to say, can you send, put a message for me on Teams, and I saw that I have 29 messages that I did not go through. Uh, how about I make, like, an issue on, on that particular oh, one? Oh, that would be amazing, <laughs> yeah, add, uh, add an issue to the, to the repository. Okay, perfect. Okay, that's a perfect thing, and, yeah. So that's that one. Anyone else? All right, so we're gonna talk about preprocessor directives. I kind of start from IPC 144 when I talk about preprocessor directives. So um, many of you already 
those who came up with me from IPC 144 know most of it um, but then um, um, I'm going to just uh, first um, I'm going to show you something over here this what you see right now that I'm going to put up for you right now is um, the project that we had like I designed this project um, five six years ago for my at the time OOP 344 classes and um, it was kind of a graph uh, graphical user interface imitation on on a text environment that was uh, multi-platform so essentially when you ran this you see what happens you actually have like you can enter a name over here you can edit that thing so and you can go to next one you can select an option from a, a checklist you can have a validated text you can have a drop down menu uh, things like that so you can do stuff like this so um and like press f1 to show help press f6 to um press f6 i think it was to move uh, a window around on your screen as you see so we did something like this created something like this that would work on uh, at the time we had Borland C++, Borland C++, Visual C++, Mac and Unix and we wanted this thing to work on all the platforms now having said that uh, let me just get out of here yeah so having said that we need to understand that um, each platform that you are dealing with because these are low level stuff as you saw I'm actually drawing something on a screen it's not you are not using C in and C out and things like that over here so um, how do how can we actually make this thing work in multiple platforms and they all work perfectly so this is so the this is essentially the reason for all um, how can I explain um, let me just uh, bring something up over here I think it was here so when you are um, for example in uh, Linux environment uh, to start working with console you have to issue these commands and these commands kind of initializes the the keyboard and tells to the uh, operating system that hey uh, I am taking over from now on and uh, you are not supposed to um, do any input and output if you want to clear the screen this other uh, information if you want to get a key a single key from the screen this is what you need to do if you want to set position of the cursor is like this and so on and so forth but if you are on Windows to actually initialize the screen you need to do these functions and the names of the functions and everything over here becomes different as you see so in here clear it clearing the screen in Windows is like this but clearing the screen on uh, on uh, uh, on uh, Linux is like this and if I go down in the next platform uh, at the time we had Borland C++ it used to be a big thing so uh, clearing the concert was something like this so so as you see it's it's kind of different now so how do I actually make this thing work when the contents of the functions the availability of the functions they are in different header files different types of functions that needs to be called to do the same thing so how do we do that what we did was uh, using preprocessor uh, directives to tell to compiler how to compile our code and how that was done is uh, through talking to the compiler in a um, uh, question that I have and and, and, and I um, uh, um, I pushed the wrong thing over here. Uh, da, da, da. Did I cancel? Give me a second. Yeah, this is what I want. So, w how do we know that? Uh, um, let's put it like this: a preprocessor directives are the ones that uh, are the directions we give to the compiler before they compile our code before the compilation begins so I actually tell to the compiler what to do to uh, um, 
before you want to start to do the compilation. It, do you, um, uh, how do we indicate that I want to, what do I put in a line of the code when I want to talk to the compiler before it compiles the C++ program? What do we add to that line? You should know this. I know it's a flag, but I don't remember it. Nah, you do remember it, Omar. You're using, you used it the day one in IPC 144. Wall. So far, Sassini is my hero. Not a single person. It's hashtag people. Hashtag. Hashtag is what you did, not the fine statement, not this. The hashtag. So when you put a hashtag, it means you're talking to the compiler. Now, after that is the command. You've done this so many times. So at ev any moment of time when you actually deal, so I'm not going to close, I'm going to put this thing aside and go to uh, um, the lecture for today. Add new item. So it's hashtag. So when you write include, you are telling compiler. That means compiler. And this is the command for the compiler. So anything that comes in front of hashtag, it's not C++ anymore. It's the compiler preprocessor directive. You're telling to the compiler, direct the compiler to what needs to be done. And then you do what you need to do. So, so... And I, and I think I gave this example in every single semester to students, but I'm going to do it over here too. So um, imagine that I have uh, two files, and I always put ridiculous names for this thing just for the heck of it. So I'm going to add a new item over here. Let's call it whatever, utility. And uh, I'm just going to put some kind of a name over here. What I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put over here, what do I do? Um, uh, ABC dot a, B, C, D, E, F. Oh, that's the fine. A, B, C, um, whatever. So that's one file that I have. I add that file over here. And I create another file. Add new item. And I'm going to call that one. Um, <laughs> okay. So I added that one. And that doesn't even have an extension. So I have a, an A, B, C, whatever and he how over here and in here i would say include io stream and then i'm going to say using namespace std then i'm going to say int main and that's it stop right over here so that's the first program that i have written i'm going to save it and in the second one i'm going to say see out what the devil what is going on and in here I'm gonna say return zero and I'm gonna close the curly bracket so as you see over here I have half of the program in this one which is include IO stream using namespace std then I have main then in here, in hiha.txt, apparently it called it txt, I have see out what is going on and return zero. And in my program over here, I'm going to say include. In here, I'm going to say abc dot whatever. And in here, I'm going to say include hiha.txt. And let's just close these things. We don't need it. So... If you show this thing to somebody and say what it is, it's just an absolute garbage. But when you actually run the program, you will see it actually runs and says what is going on. So what happened here? The compiler, when you say hashtag, it means you are asking the compiler to do something before the compilation begins. And include literally means copy and paste so you say include abc whatever it goes to abc whatever it copies that file and pastes it here then you say 
include hiha.txt so it goes to hiha.txt copies that one and pastes it over here replaces the include with that now after this is done it says there is a include still so this include happens it goes to the library in because you have less than and greater than this means the include library of visual studio it goes to include directory of visual studio and literally copies what you have inside io stream and patches it over here then looks again it keeps doing this until no hashtags are left and by that time you have pure c in your text then it starts compilation and at the end it compiles and you see what is going on do we understand what preprocessor directives are anything starting with hashtag you are telling to the compiler hey compiler i need you to do this before compilation begins and one of the so i'm going to put this thing back to what it was before i'm going to save it just like that and in here i'm going to call this a dot include a dash include dot cpp <clears throat> and giving you another example i'm gonna talk about uh, a defined statement for example so when you actually write a program you write say include io stream and you say using namespace uh, std that's fine int main in here i have integer a set to five integer b set to six and integer c set to actually 10 20 make it simple and i'm going to set c to let's say a three something like that okay then in here i'm going to say define and i'm going to say sum a plus b and then what i'm going to do i'm going to say for example over here c out and in here i'm going to say sum i uh, say multiply by uh, uh let's actually do this i'm just going to put it make this one like this and i'm going to say say c is set to sum multiply say by uh whatever two and then i'm going to say c out oh and i'm going to say c out c and l and i'm going to say return zero so what happens in here this is a simple search and replace ladies and gentlemen this is a simple search and replace nothing but that when you say define it means look for some in my code wherever you see some remove it and put a plus one instead do we understand this before compilation do we understand this so let's say over here i'm going to say some a plus x and i do something like that and when i compile and run try to run the program it's going to tell me it's build errors and it's going to why did it it says would you like to run that no okay when you say it says identify x is undefined and you click it shows line number eight and please take a look at the error again it says identifier x is undefined but the line of the program is eight do you see an x in here the answer is no so why it's giving you an error that there is an x over here that is un known it's because it searches before compilation replaces the sum with whatever is in front of the sum do we understand this so that's why sometimes when you look at the code you should be careful if you see compiler is showing you an error message about something that doesn't exist in that line don't get freaked out what the heck but compiler is broken that's not the case the case is that uh, so there are some defined statement that is searching changing something i see song jonathan here he carry 
Basarin, Alessia, they're all quiet and not responding to my, um, my, uh, what shall we call it, um, polls. So um, I miss you guys' answer. Anyways, yeah. So that's that. So, so that's the case. So if I put, uh, in other words, if I put over here A plus B, uh, could you please tell me, so B is not, it's there right now. Now the next poll is going to say, what is the output? What is the output of the program? And I want your response. <laughs> So take a look at your, the poll in your in your uh, 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 what should we call it um, uh, the chat, and you can see over here that uh, actually it's fifty fifty amazing fifty percent made a mistake, okay? Because uh, you didn't listen to what I told you exactly, which is like fifty percent answering correctly. I'm a happy man because. That usually doesn't happen. Remember, where search and replace happens, you get this and you replace it with this one. And when you do that, it's A plus B multiplied by 2 because plus has precedence over here. First 20 will be multiplied by 2. That is 40 plus 10. That is 50, not 60. So don't fall for this. You have to really, literally do what I tell you which is search and replace before you do anything and then as a result the result is 50 over here and not 60. do we understand what i am talking about fantastic all right good so this is extremely important to know and suddenly everybody's answering that's very nice so now now um <laughs> so I'm quite sorry about that. I I know I know what you're saying. I I have two kids over here, actually a kid and a dog that keeps distracting me. And uh, my, you're absolutely right, and that's very okay. All right. So, oops, I closed the thing. I think chat. No. Uh, let me just go to poll again. There we go. All right. Okay, so um, that's what we have. All right, so that's the sum that we have. And obviously, if I want to actually make this right, it's a good idea to actually do something like this to make sure everything is good. And that actually uh, kind of makes more sense if, if, if we think about it. Um, uh, and also... Um, um, you will see that so now if I actually run this you will see that it's going to be properly done and if I have something like a multiplication so if I go define multiplication and in here I'm going to say uh, a um, um, what am I going to do over here let me just put something over here that makes sense so Oh yeah, so forget forget it, not here. Okay, so this kind of makes sure that the sum is actually being done properly. So um, yeah, um, are we okay now to this point? All right, so um, uh, Yeah, so um, my apologies, but um, um, uh, I, I need to take a five minutes break. Uh, pain kind of kicked in, and then we'll come back and we'll continue afterwards. So give me like five minutes to do a little bit of stretch, and uh, I'll be with you. I'm just going to pause, and please remind me to... to uh, my apologies, everyone. <laughs> it comes a certain time in your life that you have to accept that you're old and you should... Be careful when you do stuff. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my apologies. So, 
Um, so let me see if uh, if we can continue. <coughs> Okay, we'll wait for Sazini, Iman, Jonathan, Basarin. Three more people to wait for to come. We'll wait for one more minute and we continue. Oh, I'm talking to myself. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I had it, it, it was muted and I was just talking. So, yeah. Maybe it was good that you didn't hear what I said. <laughs> okay. So, uh, my apologies. Uh, yeah. Uh, at a certain moment of time, you need to um, accept that you're old. Uh, and not to do stuff that can hurt you. My apologies. Um, no, don't, don't apologize. Like, I, 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 under, I fully understand. I've had, like, you know, I had surgery. I've had, you know, so, yeah, difficult so my times. Apologies on my that. Desk, you know. I know. <laughs> These, you should you know, apologize. You know, if you're hurt, you know, you're hurt. Yeah, I know, but uh, I shouldn't have taken a class if that's the case. But anyway, it's fine. Um, no, I'm good. So let's um, continue. Jonathan and um, Basarin is... Uh, uh they're, they're missing i um, uh, hope they're gonna be back soon um let's uh, uh let's continue recording and continue recording here there and i did not all right okay so some editing is required for this after that so it's uh, 27 remember to do i gotta remember to uh, clean that up anyways before I post it. So, um, what? Uh, so we talked about um, the uh, preprocessor directives and say they happened beforehand. And I kind of give you something and I put it. Uh, a, a, let me just put save it like this. So in here I'm going to call it bad sum. Uh, be bad sum. Sum define. And then I'm going to have good sum define after that. So this is going to be good sum define. Now, the define statement, although it could be a very simple search and replace, but it could be a bit sophisticated too if you want to. So, for example, the sum that I have over here. And it, it has to be A and B. You don't need to do that. You can actually tell to the compiler that get the sum and act, work with sum like a function. So you can actually tell, expand it like this. So you can put over here X and Y, and then you can say X plus Y over here. So essentially, you are telling to the compiler, you are telling to the compiler to see the pattern. If I put over here A and B, it looks like a function, but it's not. It's actually uh, uh, what we call a mac macro. I mean, what a macro does is, is literally it sees that this is the same, and it says, okay, this is A. I'm going to put A instead of X. I'm going to put B instead of Y, and I'm going to put over here. So it replaces all the Xs with an A and all the Ys with a B. Again, remember, it's a preprocessor directive. It's not a function. It's dumb. So the output of the following program would be Keep going, keep going, answer, answer. Keep going. Yeah. Say C and then end line. <laughs> and Tay said error. Why error? There's no error in here. C 
so half of you are not they're not daring to answer but um again it it even got worse now only uh 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 forty percent said the correct thing again please follow this is what I told you when when you asked me how do we succeed in debugging and walkthroughs to give you correct answer and I said when you are doing your walkthrough turn off your intelligence Omar turn off your intelligence okay you should be dumb as a doorknob when you are doing walkthrough so if I say over here sum x y is x plus y it means sum a b is a plus b that's it there is no parentheses anywhere again it's 50 why people are saying 60 it is 50 that's not gonna just please when you are debugging something and walking through stuff turn your intelligence to off and follow instructions completely disregard your intelligence and just do it and then after you're done finish uh, see what the outcome is going to be now in here uh, when you are doing uh, um, uh, a debugging for something that has preprocessor directives remember you have two walkthroughs walkthrough number one is to execute the preprocessor directives number two is walk through the C++ thing so to do the first thing of course you're not going to be able to do that but this one you can so you take this you put it over here so that's your walkthrough your walkthrough does this you put it over here then you say I'm gonna replace the sum plus a plus B now do the walkthrough and see what the outcome is gonna be are we okay with this all right so as we mentioned before so again in here I'm gonna say um, just to remind you of it that's bad sum macro dot CPP okay Now this is not good some macro, but 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 it's almost okay macro. So this is uh, um, let's say um, let me just take a look and see. Let me see how can I make this thing go wrong. Give me a second. Let me look. Yeah, that's good. So um, and I'm gonna have another define over here defined and that's going to be multiplication between x and y and in here I'm going to say x multiply by y okay so now if I say over here c is equal to multiply by uh, say a and b and plus 2 Oh, not multiply product product of that one and I'll go C out C and I run the program I'm gonna have 60 and 202 are we okay with this all right so but I want you to realize that um, when I am writing is something like when I'm writing something like this you gotta uh, understand that not necessarily you you what you have over here will be uh, one argument over here Com uh, compiler is smart enough to to go through this so so um, um, if I want to write I can actually write something like this I can say now then take your pens out and start doing this so if I say a uh, plus uh, say one over here and in here I'm gonna go um, B plus one and I'm gonna go multiply by two and I'll do the same thing over here so I'm gonna say over here uh, and I'm gonna go C out C and L and I'm gonna have C is product of A plus one 
and just to make the math easier for everyone I'm gonna put makes this one two and make this one three <laughs> okay so this one is plus one and B plus one and this one is plus two okay so C out C and L so what I want you to do now I want you to we know that this one is going to be uh, so this one is going to be uh, 2 plus 3 that's 5 that's going to be 10 we know that okay so that's 10 and for the product we know uh, 6 plus 2 that's going to be 8 correct so that's a b and that's uh, 2 multiplied by 3 that is 6 plus 2 that's 8 and I want this one so um, this one I want to know what it is and this one okay and just to, sh to give you something so you can actually uh, do it so your output is going to be whatever the answer is comma in the response when I'm asking think about this and tell me what the output of these two things are here now just remember a plus 1 will replace X B plus 1 will replace Y tell me what the output is going to be I'll give you a few minutes before actually let me just put it on and uh, and wait for you to answer so I'm gonna say over here give me the answer and the uh, answer will be okay uh, first of all this is exact output so put comma don't say this and that and that and is um, put comma okay exactly how it's supposed to be so I'm gonna to, to give everybody time to do it assume this is a walkthrough for the test final test then I want you to see if you can tell me what the outputs gonna be in here determine the exact output of the following program if I could say I'm still for uh, waiting for the the other half of the class. Irish, where are you? Chung, where are you? I want to see if I already know I got so the, far the first so far wrong. one two three people are getting two percent extra for their final test oh, that's not fair come on no it is I fair. One it is hundred percent <laughs> fair hundred percent fair because I said 
he, I mentioned you 50 times. First thing, turn off your intelligence. Do this. And I'm waiting. I did do that. And then I forgot about the brackets that made me lose my intelligence. I told you to do turn off your intelligence. First, I said you have to execute this twice. First, you have to run it. Then you have to do it. You didn't do it. You did it in your brain. That's why you gave everyone so much time. And uh, yeah. Also, <laughs> no, but then here's the thing. You're giving the people who are going to do well in the test anyways an extra bonus. No, well, not, at like everyone else. not at all. Not at all. Not at all. And I love the fact that Irish actually wrote <laughs> okay uh, jonathan is not here apparently so um so we're gonna i'm gonna publish the poll and then execute so that's the poll over here and oh shoot uh so uh, uh, i want the people who <laughs> who answered number so let me just run it for you to see okay so this is the output it's for, it's 14 and 8 okay so uh, i know 9 is irish i know that okay and um, and those people who answered number 6 and 4 okay 6 and 4 so i have them so uh, six, two people, six, and one person, four. Uh, let me know later on, too, because I just published a poll before looking at the names, so I don't have access to who to who actually answered that question. So um, the total of one, one, three, and four people got, uh, two. did I say 2%? <laughs> yeah, 2% for... Uh, for final you know what uh, um, uh, yeah so I'm gonna have more of these things coming up it, it just uh, and these are very simple questions I want you to really really think about it and and I'll keep giving these bonus marks as we go through uh, to, to the end of the semester so and it's gonna be very simple thing I just want you to listen and get bonus marks in class that's what I want to do and again, 48% of the class, the class rushed. And Omar, don't tell me no. Okay? You, you are all smart people. And because of that fact, uh, you trust your brain a little too much. And that's going to cause trouble. <laughs> all right. So that's that. So again, this is a bad one. So the, what is the purpose? So I mean, here I'm going to say uh, C is good some bad uh, prod macro, okay, dot CPP. H how it, what we can do to make sure that the macro comes out in the best way and correct, most correct way possible, you must put everything in braces. So this has to go in braces, and this has to go in braces, and this has to go in braces. Now this ladies and gentlemen, is what is exactly a prod is going to look like and it's going to be perfect. Okay, so this is what you need to do. So now if I actually run the program, you will see the answers are going to come actually out correctly, which is <laughs> 14 and 14. Okay, so uh, yeah, so that's that. So again, make sure you understand exactly how the fine statement work. I, I hope that I conveyed the message to to understand that you have to do the walkthrough twice. It's extremely important. So this one is CDE, good uh, sum, sum and prod macros dot CPP. Now macros can be done in many different ways. You can actually like things like, for example, define minimum of x and y and then in here i can go uh, something like x less than y if that is true then x is the minimum otherwise y is the minimum so that is a perfect thing but you have to remember to do this this is the proper way everything goes in braces so you go like this then you go like this 
then you go like this and this one and this one and that's a macro that is going to give you minimum of two safely but again can anybody tell me how can this go wrong uh you don't know if the two things that you're comparing can actually be compared what if you're comparing two objects that don't have that's that one thank you over correct so what if what if what if they're equal it doesn't matter if they're equal not is, less than or equal is correct because when you say like minimum of two and they're equal one of them is going to be coming back so it is the minimum so that's good okay what else so um omar put his template hat on and said <laughs> the less than operator should be uh, defined between x and y that's fine but what is the that applies to this one and this one too but i'm not talking about that how the conditional statement in c can go wrong ipc144 how can a conditional expression go wrong conditional expression is not an if statement we know that in conditional expression when it actually gets translated when it, when it gets compiled it goes in a tricky way because of that fact x and y must have same type you cannot have an integer and a double the compiler won't cast them it's just going to cause trouble so you have to make sure that the types are the same so again my message is although it looks like a cool thing that we have written over here and i can go over here something like c out min of uh, a and b and it's going to give me the minimum of the two which is very fine okay but realize that this is going to expand to this and this must work otherwise it won't work so uh, macros are extremely fast and good they are better than functions if you can use them because at any stage it's going to be expanded to the actual thing no function call happening no stack is being used he it's the heap st stack uh, of the program is call stack is used it runs it's quick and everything it's very fine but you got to be careful when you are creating them are we okay with macros down to this point and like another problem of macros is the fact is that the compiler can't check for you if you did the macro correctly. Like oh, instance, yeah, yeah. You, you got to get an error like... message in here. So when you get an error, yeah, like yeah. when you get an error, like if if you get an error message and the error message doesn't make sense, look at the page, look at the line and see if you have over there either a template or a macro. That's that's the yeah. rule of thumb. So in here, I'm going to say more macro CDEF more macros macros can be multiple line too but uh it, it is not actually multiple line it's, it's a single line so you can you can create a long macro like that but if you put a backslash over here it means i'm continuing the line in the next line and then you go over there i'm not going to go to that one we, we don't need to um, it's not something that we need to talk about so you can have multiple line macros too in uh, nc here I'm going to write C out, and in here I'm going to write um, I'm going to write something like this. Uh, so I'm going to start from so let's make this be say five, and I'm going to write over here uh, do uh, and in here I'm going to say. Just like do say I'm gonna go um, C out C out I wanna write something that C out I'm gonna say do something silly I wanna write so um a do C 
see how A, like that. And in here, I'm going to say while A plus plus is less than B. Okay, I can write something like this, right? So if I write something like this, do C out A. Why didn't it write? Oh, yeah, while A plus plus is less than. Why didn't it print it for me? And C out. Am I writing something silly? Oh, maybe I'm not. I'm Oh shoot, I'm, I'm editing the wrong file. Shoot, copy. Oh, actually, that's three. So I'm going to come over here. I was shocked. That's better. So if I run this program now, you will see that it actually goes two, three, four, five, and prints it that way, okay? Uh, so what if I want this to be a macro? Not that new line thingy, but this. What if I want this to be a macro? Or even the new line afterwards, doesn't matter. What if I want this to be a macro? If I want this to be a macro, so I'm going to say uh, something like define um, from 2, and in here I'm going to go uh, a, B, then then what I'm going to do over here, I have to put everything over here in one line. If we don't want to, you just put over here backslash, and then you copy everything that you have right to the last semicolon. Copy over here and right put it over here. So in here, I'm going to put do and another backslash and and I'm going to put over here C out another backslash and in here I'm going to put while another backslash and make sure that you don't put the last semicolon because you want it to look like a, a, a function that you are using so so you don't put the last one over there so essentially this becomes your macro now in here um, let's put over here something like uh, so that's X x and x and y and y so something like this so if i do something like this, this from two thingy now i can go over here from two and in this from two i'm going to put a and b and a semicolon so this essentially becomes this macro because it's one single line right to the end um, and it looks like as if I am writing it in multiple lines. So I'm kind of fooling uh, myself to do something like that. It runs the same way with absolutely no difference. So this is how you write uh, multiple line macros. Multiple line macro. Oh, it's not going to work. I can't put the... <laughs> I can't put the comment over there because the comment go path first through the thing. Yeah, it, you could do the, this one. Uh, why is it giving me an error? What did I do? Define from two. Just suspicious to you, it just does that sometimes. It will just hang on an error. Oh, okay, anyways. So, yeah, um, multiple line macro. There we go. Okay, so that's that. So, it's that one. So, in here, it's going to be uh, F multiple line, line macro. Let's see if we can. I think, by the way, this has nothing to do with CPP, okay? These are all C language, not CPP. So don't think that uh, we are teaching something C++. This is absolutely C. It has nothing to do with C++. Okay, just remember that. Uh, it's just because we didn't cover it down to this point, now we are.
okay so what is the next thing we need to go through we have the marker macro we have uh, oh and now let's talk about uh, really so these are define and include but if you recall we have if define if not define let me just bring the the notes for today up and I'm gonna show you the things that you can do in here and then I'm gonna show you the code that we have with that thing uh, with that uh, um, multi-line thing that we have written so you can see exactly how it's being used so so this is um, these like define include if define so if define it, it whatever you put in front of it checks to see if it's defined if not defined vice versa so the correct way actually to define something or define a macro or something you see I'm defining a sum over here some maybe is used is defined in IO stream prod may be used is somewhere the the correct safe way of define statement is to do this saying if because you want your sum you haven't used any sum of anybody and you want the sum for the define statement to be this so you're gonna say as of this moment you're gonna say if defined sum okay what you do in here is and then in here you're saying uh, end if so you're saying if defined sum then you're gonna say undef sum so what happens in here is this it says if anybody defines sum down to this point undefine it and now define it afterwards so what happens is that this undefined statement removes any previous definition that you had in here so if I am nuts enough I can do something like this take a look I'm gonna do something extremely crazy now mm, let me take this stuff out I just need the sum over here so let's do it like this so <clears throat> I can do this if it this is nuts but hey if defined null I can say undef null and in here I'm gonna say and if now I can say define null being one two three so now if you go see out null null is not null anymore uh, what happened oh I have a semicolon over here so now if I do something like this the null that used to be zero it's not null anymore it's one two three um, do we understand how the find statements actually work so the correct way of creating a defined statement for whatever you have is to first undefine it make sure it's not being used um, I'm gonna say over here uh, this this is nuts and this is crazy and it is for example only don't think that you shouldn't do this okay <laughs> that's a bad thing to do don't do this anyways um all right let me write one more time i don't have any error all right so that's that and uh, you can actually bring this right halfway through this over here so if i actually uh put this right over here you'll see what i mean when it happens before compilation now in here i'm gonna go see out null and l and you'll see the first null over there will be zero and the second one is going to be one two three because the action of search and replace happens after this remember you have two walkthroughs to perform first you have to do the walkthrough and then go and then see what happens so when it comes like this we you have to start from here and start translating so this null is zero originally but after this everything's going to be replaced do we understand this all right so having known all these things I'm going to just going to show you a few things that we have so um, um, like there please go through this and 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 look at all the uh, uh, 
things that uh, it is mentioned in here I just, I just want to go don't want to go through every single one there are a few things that is extremely important to know I'm gonna bring it up these are all examples about the macro macros that I gave these are the ones that I want you to know okay so if you if you add these things to your program these values are predefined okay so when you actually run this you will see that it says the name of the source file is this the date of pre-processing is this and the time of pre-processing is this and then it does that these are predefined values in uh, uh, C++ library and um, it, it becomes handy if you want to uh, for example create some kind of a a specific thing to happen at compile time um, include we already talked about oh if condition else so we have if and you put a condition and elif else and end if so in this condition over here these are all uh, conditions that you can make to do things in here it says first it defines case a case b case c just not to put zero one two then we're gonna say if case is case c uh, define case case C then the only thing that's going to get comp uh, compiled is here and the other ones are not going to therefore one include is selected going back to what I was showing to you I'm going to show you the the code that was written um, as I mentioned so I wanted to for example we wanted to make sure that uh, the program compiles and runs in all platforms so this is what we have done if you see in here we are saying uh, defi define basic input output Linux as one, define basic output uh, Microsoft as being two, basic output Borland to be three, basic output Unix to be four. Then I'm going to say if Borland is defined, it means the compiler is Borland. Then define bio platform to be BIO Borland, define bio lower level header file to be console input output dot H, and so on so forth so we do different types of defines and then in here I'm gonna say extern C include the BIO lower, lower level uh, uh, header file which is essentially a C program when I say extern C it means compiler compile this one as C and the rest as C++ so the for example curses holds the basic input output keyboard entries console entries for for Linux and uh, and and Unix and uh, Mac console input output uses it for Windows and Borland and that's going to be replaced with that and then the uh, uh, normal things that we have are come over there but those functions that change we give them the same name of the function so if you look at the class that I have for B console is a very normal class it says this is the buffer cursor row and everything and it has series of functions that I have in here that uses it so this basic console of mine can get the number of rows columns get position set position pause alarm get key put character very basic stuff so it gets one key and put character and then we write everything with this one but because these are the basic stuff you're you're, that you're gonna do like literally you are checking the keyboards that are being hit and you are doing something each one of them has a different implementation depending on the platform so we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna say if this is uh, Linux or Unix this is how the constructor is this created this is how the destructor is created this is how I clear the screen this is how I get a single key this is how I set the position of the cursor this is how I put a character on the screen this is how I sound an alarm if it's Microsoft this is how it's done and each function will be compiled based on the platform that it was in and therefore the everything's gonna work uh, I can move the source code from one platform to another and everything works exactly like the other one and all these things happen at compile time which means um, the source code is multi-platform the executable is not you can write your programs in, a C, in C++ in a way that you can compile it on Mac and then move it compile it depending on how you are doing it so you create the shell and the, the the guts of the shell uh, are done 
based on the platform and you're setting your compiler to compile it accordingly based on which compiler it is on are we okay with this all right so let me take a look and see if there's anything in here that I'm missing yeah if debug we've done that 50 times yeah that's it so these are preprocessor directives that I went but we went through we kind of jumped a little ahead uh, in the in the subject which is cool uh, and um, that's it anybody have any questions uh, can I look at the, the code again for Mac oh you're talking about the console input output thingy yeah yeah this one yeah it's for Mac uh, so this is so for Mac for Linux and and Unix yeah so that would be okay so because I wanted to make sure because I know Mac is does use a Unix platform but it is you're Unix. in this one it is Unix uh, so I just wanted to make sure that uh, when you're doing so this one is just basically if it's either a Linux or a Mac it will do the same exact yeah so the constructor is implemented that way and the destructor okay. is implemented that way clear is it if they implemented that way but if I go for example to Borland compiler that doesn't exist I think anymore uh, this is how the constructor happens this is how the uh, destructor happens this is how you clear the console this is how you get a key and so on and so forth okay. and yeah uh, this was uh, very do good they, yeah uh, one other thing I want to ask because do they have would there be a preprocessor direct, uh, one for uh, was it Android as well? Do they have uh, uh, a I new have no Mac idea. I've written this thing when and Android didn't exist, I think, at the time. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah, that old. Because, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I get that. I get yeah, that. Yeah. Because so, like, but, but uh, for Android, yeah. why you want to write the text program? Uh, but anyway, so but what I'm saying is that uh, on, originally we so didn't like even have here. these. We used to do it ourselves. So we didn't yeah. have this part we would do it ourselves and move it. So this makes it automatic. Yes. Um, so yeah, so instead of if defined oh. over here, we, we would have done it automatically. We would do it manually and then compile it. So when we move it to Linux, we would change one keyword only to Linux and everything would compile to Linux. And then um, we took this internal stuff, but uh, there's probably something there. I'm sure that there is something that tells you what the uh, defined statement is for it. I have no idea, quite frankly. Anything yeah. else? Uh, yeah. <coughs> Inte, what? You said uh, you're not sure if you have a question or not. <laughs> and no, no, I just wasn't sure if you're going to say, yes, I have a question or no, I I do, no, no, have, no. A do question? have a question. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> No, so no. The, the question was, do we have a question? <laughs> and I see m many of you say no, and the others are just sitting over there saying nothing. All right. So that's the lecture for today. Um, I can't, I'm not going to put the recording up immediately. I have to edit it and uh, clean it up before I do it. Uh, so that's that. Uh, have yourself a beautiful day, and uh, we will talk soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.